following those uh, the period of time, what has been happening quietly during the 20th century was the revolution in biology. And I think this uh, slide is a sort of a turning point that, uh, from which we call modern biology. This was a very rare moment that uh, certain principle, you know, like a physical principle, like quantum principle that uh, all your speakers refer to, certain biological principles can be written down and has no doubt in that. There are certain variations in, in life history and activities, but this principle that we are all born with a certain set of DNA, and DNA is the template from which we produce RNA, and that's how we deliver into a protein that falls into a three-dimensional structure, and the shape and the manner that's are folded into a three-dimensional space is what defines the function of that particular protein, and that's what makes our life. That's, that's true. It's very true, and you cannot change it. Another event happened about 15 years ago, and that's the, the decode of a human genome. And here you see a Francis uh, Collins and Craig Venter with uh, Bill Clinton on his way out of his White House, actually, I think, around 2000. And this is the time when they discovered that we only carry 3 billion base pairs of DNA, no more or no less. Actually, we, cons we have about 25,000 genes, which is a little, well, twice the number of genes in a fruit fly, which is a little depressing when we discovered, but that's, that's who we are. What this tells us is that until this time, when we had some uh, question unanswered, we sometimes made an excuse. There must be a gene that has not been identified, and that may play the role to do this and to do that. But from this point, we have no such excuse. We have 25,000 genes in the genome, and that's all we've got to carry out our function. The question I'm going to raise today, and with these conditions, we are going to, we are going to see uh, what uh, we can do with those uh, new uh, biological conditions. I have a very small task today. With this new knowledge, what I intended to do is to create a second language that our body is going to use. Our body, is, uh, our body has a certain set of languages. For instance, here I have a collection of a TJ beta language that we call a communication uh, language. And those molecules go around in your body from one part of the body to another, say from brain to your stomach for your, to your pancreas or back and forth. These are the messengers that tells your body to do this or to do that. I'd like to create a new set of language, and, uh, and I'll explain to you why. For instance, when certain language is not doing very well, then you, you, get, uh, you sometimes get this uh, ph phenotype. Here's uh, what I'm showing is a cattle uh, called uh, Belgian blue, in this case, a language called GDF8. You don't really need to know the, the letter of this. When GDF8 is not doing a proper uh, messaging, then you get this bulky muscle, no fat, and it also happens in the human too. I'm showing actual sentences, those 33 sentences here. You don't need to read these sentences. These are the uh, a series of letters, it's called amino acid sequence. Some, of the, some people in the audience may not be familiar with this. Protein is made up with a series of amino acids. What you're seeing is a long series of alphabets, about 100 letters long, and just pretend it's a sentence. For instance, this sentence called GDF8 is the one that I just told you about. Tell the body to lose the fat and gain uh, muscle, that's the sentence. Another sentence called BMP2, highlighted here, is a sentence that tells the a muscle cell to turn into a bone, okay? Just pretend those are the sentences. Here's another sentence called activin A, to tell the cell to produce a hormone called FSH. It's a, a female hormone that controls the period. These are the sentences. And what I would like to do is to recreate new words that never existed in, in nature by rearranging those words of those sentences in a manner that uh, I may find uh, applicable. Let's do some uh, exercise here. Is it uh, going to work? A brand new thing. Dr. Gilman, my uh, uh, Salk faculty member, uh, he's about 90 years old. 
he received the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1977. These are real sentences, factually correct sentences. Here's another sentence. South Korea enjoys a round of 16 for the World Cup soccer. Oh, darn. This slide was made in, <laughs> four years ago. No, oh, darn. Anyway, the, that's a real sentence, right? Salk Institute is celebrating 50th birthday in 2010. These are the real sentences, and you rearrange these words, and you may come up with a sentence like, Salk Institute received a round of 16 in 1977. Total nonsense, garbage sentence. It, so that's, most of the time, those sentences will be a garbage sentence. I knew when I g gave this talk, uh, I knew uh, Dr. Uh, Gilman is in the audience, and when he looked at this new sentence, Dr. Gilman enjoys 50th birthday in 2010. He was very happy. Now, that's what we want to do. It, can, we, can we do this? And there's a long technology uh, story uh, that I have to tell you to explain, but I'm going to skip that, except I'm going to tell you one sentence that we created, and I'm going to call it AB204. Here's the idea. Why do we want to create a new sentence? We all know, every one of us, starts with a single cell called embryo. That's how we, that's how we start. During the process of about nine months, they turn into a, they divide and develop and turn into a tissue, in this variety of tissues in, in the body. And that body then lasts 100 years. I'm sorry to tell you this and to deliver this message to you, but all of us, including uh, myself, we are all designed to terminate this body at around 100 years. And that's the program. It's not an accident. It's program. It's encoded in one of those three billion base pairs of DNA in each cell of yours in your body. What inspired me some years ago was the, the professor Yamanaka from Kyoto. He demonstrated that one of these differentiated cells, uh, one of those uh, fully differentiated cells, which cannot go back, can be actually uh, can trace back in time and turn into an embryo-like state. Now it's no longer in your, uh, mother's, in your mother, but it's in a petri dish. It, this, it, this cell is called induced pluripotent cells, IPS cells. Again, these names are not important. These cells in a petri dish is actually has a new ability to trace down this uh, time period all over again and give you a new chance to recreate new tissue. That's that's the message of that experiment is that our body, our cells, has a hardware. Our body is actually capable of recreating a new cell and restart the, the time clock again, but we just don't have the message that tells the cell to do so. So that arrow, red arrow, is the synthetic signal that we want to create. That's what I want to do in, in the next 10 years, 20 years, or in my lifetime. Now, cells don't, re I mean, I mean, uh, cells don't need, uh, really talk to each other through a cell phone. They send out uh, messenger molecules, and this messenger molecules has a, carries a sentence uh, on, its, uh, on its surface. You really need a very uh, uh, deep knowledge about how they are uh, encoded on the surface of the molecule and how they get received and understood by the receptors shown in uh, green. If you are one of those messenger molecules shown on the right side of the screen, that's a butterfly molecule that runs down the bloodstream and they latch onto these green receptors. And green receptors recognize that that's the message that I'm supposed to receive and then bring in another purple receptors together. And on the right bottom corner, you can see a full assembly, uh, assembly of the, the receptors and the ligand from which point the message is then sent to the nucleus and it goes through the process that it is meant to be. What's that? <laughs> okay. Now, that's a simple way of describing. In a, in a technical term, this is what we did. As a practice, the first round, we chose two parental molecules. You see a two line of uh, uh, sentences here. Top line is called BMP2, so let's call it B. And the bottom line is called activin. Let's call it A. And the, the, the new sentence we created starts out from the bottom line and then move to the top line and then to the bottom line and move to the top line. In other words, it's half B, half A. B A, B B, A A. 
it's written in that, sen in that sequence. So such, se uh, such sequence actually is derived from the natural uh, sentences. So we did a little bit of cheating. Yet the whole protein itself was never created by the nature, and we are hoping this uh, does something good. If you didn't get the, the concept of this, essentially what you do is you, here's a potato man A. It's got limbs and uh, body parts, and here's another potato man, man B, and you're reassembling half A, half B. That chimeric molecule is what we have created, called AB204. If you really didn't get this, this is the last chance to understand. In nature, there are a lot of butterflies in different shapes and colors, but they essentially look similar. We are reshuffling its uh, uh, wings, and, uh, and then at the end, you're creating this chimeric uh, butterfly. Got it? All right. With that, I'm going to a real data, a couple of slides, so bear with me. In the body, it, uh, cells turn into a bone, and those cells have been already pre-decided. They are called pre-osteoblasts. These are the group of cells that are ready to go into a bone as soon as they receive the message. The top row is uh, uh, what happens over a one-week time period if you don't receive anything. If you look at it from left to the right, nothing changes. It looks the same. If you look at the uh, uh, middle uh, row, from the left to the right, over one week time period, as soon as BMP2 is around, then it turns into a little black uh, uh, spot. And these black spots are the stain that signifies the birth of uh, bones. It's, a, it's called the foncosa stain. It's uh, actually a staining of calcium phosphate deposited outside the cell, which is the material for the bone. If you look at the bottom row, from the left to the right, this is what happens if, you, if your cells are, are, are exposed to AB204, the new synthetic signal that we created. Now, is it convincing? We've, we've gone a little further. Here's the skull of a, a little mouse, and you drill a little hole, about five millimeter in diameter. On the left side, you see the, the, the hole. After three months, nothing happens. It doesn't have ability to repair itself. You can see the x-ray picture underneath, uh, and the one in the middle, is the one uh, that has received natural signal called BMP2. Uh, you may not be able to see it from the back, but it was treated with the one microgram. You can see, uh, you can see it from the front, and you can see the x-ray picture of that. It has a partial recovery. If you look at the right side, now this is a full recovery uh, by AB204, and the qu amount of protein that we delivered was 0.1 microgram, one-tenth of a material. So you can see that the repair was much better. So actually, if you, if you uh, uh, work it out, uh, probably we won't even need one-tenth, maybe one-fiftieth of the material to do the job. So that's the new synthetic signal that we created. One of the applications that we immediately see is so-called non-union bone fracture. This is what happens when you grow old, when bones are fractured, and they are, if they are too far away, they can never fuse back. When uh, gr your grandma falls on the staircase, and the bone fractures, uh, eventually you have to use a titanium or some plates because bones never get fused back. It's like a dried sausage. Once you cut it and then left it on the kitchen table for too long, you cannot fuse it back. And that's what you see. Here's a, we deliberately separated the bone, tibia bone, the, your bone here, and five millimeter over one month time period. Collagen sponge doesn't do anything. If you look at the middle one, you have some partial recovery if you treat it with BMP2, but with AB204, voila, we've got it. Now, imme immediately we think we can help with the lower back pain. This is what uh, you get when disc is worn out. And disc is worn out because your bones are pushing to each other, and then the, your, dis uh, your disc is pushing, uh, being pushed out. And we think we can probably help by delivering a piece of sponge in that place, in, in place of a, a disc. This is, uh, I want to show you the movie first. This is what uh, people do currently by doctors. One method for vertebral fusion 
who both implanted small pieces of the hip bone between the injured vertebrae. These small pieces of bone will combine or fuse with the existing vertebrae to create one solid bone. Until the bones fuse together, the spinal column must be kept immobile. Oftentimes, a metal rod is inserted to keep the spine in place. An external cast or brace can also be used for additional support. I'll stop the video here. And I, the, the take-home message is, you don't have to harvest the bone from your hip. You don't have to do two surgeries. You'll go straight to the area where you need the new bone. And instead of a bone, you're going to use a piece of sponge. In, a, in our case, we are actually using a calcium phosphate. And AB204 will be a powerful super glue. It's really nothing but a super glue to fuse the bone above and below. So you're not going to have 33 bones anymore. You'll have 32. You're OK. 31, it's okay. It's, uh, beyond that, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what we are pursuing right now. I just gave you a one example as a way to how we are going to uh, go beyond what nature has offered. I got one minute, but I have only 30 seconds in my slide. And another thing that we want to do is actually uh, to develop a communication language with the bacterial uh, system in your gut. We have 10 times more cells living in your gut. So actually, I am 10% human cells and 90% bacterial cells. The body we are looking at here is actually uh, mostly uh, bacterial cells. I'm going to end my talk with a philosophical statement for young people in the audience. Whenever I have an opportunity to speak to the public, I want to share my passion for science and excitement of science. I want to just read the, the title up here, My Life is Not That Important except for those impacts that I make for the people around me. With that, I want to leave a quote from uh, my hero, Einstein, saying, scientists are having a lot of fun. Thank you very much.